it's between 10 and 50 percent of the medicine sold in developing countries could be, in fact, fake. In 2010, the counterfeit uh, medicine industry is worth $75 billion. They have no knowledge of pharmaceuticals. They're just trying to put something together that looks like the original product. Well, it's obviously quite shocking that people can make products in, in a backyard facility that could kill people. I think that these are people who are basically looking to make money. To some of these people, a medicine is just a commodity. It's undoubtedly a disease of greed because the, uh, the motivation behind it is profit and there is no concern for the harm that it causes. You know, it's a clever industry. You know, there's a lot of money there. And so I think, you know, as, as much as we do in terms of trying to identify, you know, trying to kind of discriminate, you, know, you know, look at the discrimination between this hologram and this, the fake hologram and the true hologram, I think the counterfeiters will almost always be a step ahead of us. You can find any medicine, any drug, which is having the margin. They are making fake medicines for their profit. If there is a profit, they will make it. The Burmese border town of Tachilek, infamous as a haven of opium production and smuggling since the 1920s, is at the center of the Golden Triangle. Peddlers at the border market sell a dizzying array of fake products from China. Watches, alcohol, handbags, shoes, and a potentially lethal product, counterfeit medicine. Unsuspecting tourists pick up cheap goods, unaware of any danger posed by consuming shoddy imitations of medicines that can be deadly. Where's that from? This morning. Yeah. yeah, where's this from? This is. Uh, this is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, see a list. This one, uh, this one two. This one one. This one. Okay. 500 bucks, okay? Yeah, where you get? This here. Yeah. Biagra, Biagra. Where it come from? Stroma. Where uh, come from? USA, no. no. There's estimates out there that I've read um, from authorities that say that even in the West, in developed countries, that 1% of the medicines there is potentially counterfeit. Of course, that goes higher in the developing countries, as I said, up to 50% or some estimates of the uh, amount of fake medicines in the developing world. Sukhumvit Road, the tourist center of Bangkok, boasts a dense layout of markets openly selling anything and everything, including counterfeit medicines, with no attempts to conceal or hide illicit products. Many products contain up to five times the recommended amount of active ingredients, a potentially lethal cocktail. This one is 800 milligrams per pill. 800 milligrams of the active ingredient. This blatant, in-your-face business is only possible through protection by the local mafia. I saw first fake medicine in 1982. At that time, there were some generic people, those who were making generic medicines and their, their product was not uh, uh, in demand in the market and they are not getting very good profits. They started it by counterfeiting the big products available in the market of the big MNC companies. They started with that. And at that time, there were some products only. Some, you can count it at that time. Nowadays, we are facing a new trend of increased uh, you know, antibiotics. Like uh, general use antibiotics, amoxicillin, ampicillin, uh, clarithromycin, these are take, you know, the lead in terms of poor quality medicines in the region. Counterfeit medicines commonly available in the market are antibiotics, painkillers, and yes, life-saving drugs. 
La sophistication des contrefacteurs, en tout cas des criminels qui sont impliqués dans les trafics, est, est à la hauteur de la sophistication de leurs de leur produits. Et on retrouve maintenant des contrefaçons de médicaments qui sont complètement à l'identique en termes d'identification de, de, de packaging. Donc euh, on voit que les systèmes d'impression qui sont utilisés par les contrefacteurs sont excellentes, voire parfois meilleurs que le produit d'origine, que la, la peinture utilisée, les couleurs sont, sont absolument de, de très très bonne qualité et qu'il est parfois difficile de reconnaître le bon du mauvais sans avoir fait d'analyse chimique. To distinguish between genuine and counterfeit medicines, analysts employ a number of technologies to determine authenticity. In Singapore, the Health Sciences Authority labs tested fake versions of Lipitor, a top-grossing cholesterol-lowering medication which flooded the global market in recent years. A couple of days ago, an unknown sample of Lipitor was submitted to the laboratory. Today, we are going to run a series of tests on this unknown sample and then compare it to the authentic Lipitor that we have in the laboratory. I'm looking at the packaging analysis of the samples. So on the left is the authentic sample and on the right is the unknown. I see differences in the printing quality between the two samples. The authentic sample is of a better printing quality than the unknown sample. To the naked eye, counterfeit medicine can look identical to authentic medicine, so more sophisticated tests must sometimes be performed. One important test to determine the chemical composition and the active ingredient present in the pills is Raman spectroscopy. This method analyzes the different components of the unknown sample and compares them to the active ingredient in the authentic sample of the drug. When the unknown sample is compared to the authentic sample, we can see that the chemical profile looks different. The active ingredient is detected in the authentic sample but is not detected in the unknown sample. We found that uh, based on counterfeit standards, this is actually a very poor counterfeit sample. The sample, the unknown sample compared to the authentic is very, very different. And uh, the worst thing is that uh, when we checked for the quantitation um, by our pharmaceutical lab, when they quantitate the amount of active pharmaceutical ingredient in it, it was found to have none. That means there was no active ingredient that was present in the unknown sample of Lipitor that was submitted to us. In developing countries, such as in the Mekong region of Southeast Asia, the threat comes from unlicensed retail outlets in remote areas, especially along international borders. Many of these mom and pop stores sell everyday household items alongside medicines, usually without a license. They certainly know that the product is coming from out, outside the normal distribution channels. N normally when they order from the pharmaceutical company, it's delivered by the pharmaceutical company's distributor. But these counterfeit products are, uh, are delivered by people on motorbikes, um, obviously outside the normal distribution channels, so that they, they know that they're either getting grey market or counterfeit stuff. I think, it, I think there are some cases where they think they're selling grey market, but it's actually counterfeit. They think it's just maybe intended for another market and they're getting it cheaper because the they're avoiding taxes. But I think that there's definitely some cases where they're aware that they're selling counterfeit and, and go ahead and sell it. <laughs> Imported and locally produced medicines circulate through hundreds of wholesale outlets eventually making their way to pharmacies and health facilities in the remote areas of the countryside. A vast majority of drugs for the private sector first come through the Olympic market, and the Cambodian Ministry of Health closely monitors the flow of these products from importation to retail distribution. <laughs> Mechanism, 
nó dương ai cắt mình thôi bán nếu ở các đại phải chịu bỏ đất chụp bật ra rồi còn tua bán là sợi lại lại chi phí vị thiên nhân cá tam lâu chấm bám vị thiên nhân cá tam lâu chấm bám mới miền đây tha ở nhà thô con sọc hà bị ba vị thiên nhân cá ba của xuống đôi chì lạ nghe cùng lần ở xuân nâng miền ở các miền là tập hiệp cướp cón nó miền chiều bài cướp cón đừng chót tới tam đán cướp biển đất cả lại để luận nam ở sọc bám cầm bị bấy cá bàn hạt thông mới tiết cứ chầm luôn cả lại lụa thằng nào ăn sáp nó sống thì cảm thấy chiến nâng vì hạ đâu chiến nâu ra xa chầm luôn nó hạ bài hay là ăn sáp chiên mà còn cả lại mình bên chỉ riêng qua mà đa để vì thế việc tiêm tia nơi mà chưa bài cả là ăn sáp thì cả hai nhà nâng thong tp về tiêm tia nâng cả nhà độ lực độ bảo là professional nè vị trí việt nâng thong ไอ้ที่ใบทองมาพอดคือการอบรมประชาบรอดสำคัญนะคือการอบรมประชาบรอดนั้นช่วงการยังทัวร์ประชาการจะมวยอัดบานที่เดี๋ยวกุ้มประชาการอย่างใบนั้นฉบับการอนุวัตฉบับด่าตัวที่ปีคือวัดปัทหัวการประกันยกเอเดียบอดระบอกโปรเฟชชั่นอลที่ใบคือชั้นเตะระบอกในอาญาโทสมัครเก่งไทยนั้น thì bốn cái là tôi khoe trái là bác professional bác là nhà vị trí như vậy là ngon rồi chia làm mà xiên chẳng phải mà xi chẳng thử cả miếng nhà lụa nó thử miếng là cái là tôi khoe trái thì bây giờ ở sọt cà ray hay là nhà lụa sọt chẳng thử cả miếng mà nhà sẹt cá rồi ở bậc cát nó khôi luôn thá mục là bò là bò dương mà mình mục là bò để giờ thì hào thà rọc lôi rọc cạn khát chẳng nên đại khát đi thì mục là bò đại dương rùm chẳng nay chỉ mối nướng cà phát đó sọt cà phê chun và chia bò rọt Nhi ái chỉ sức, chỉ human rights, chỉ chỉ sức rồi bỏ, tệ thế chốn, sức rồi bỏ này, chẳng ngữ sức rồi bỏ bởi vì bỏ rõ. Sức rồi bỏ mà nút vì bắt đầu chân khi cả cổ rốt, cả bắt đầu xe va, sốc hợp hiếp, bắt đầu ở xuất và có bắt đầu quân hợp hiếp, bảo ở xuất khám viên quân hợp hiếp, công này dây ẩm phía đường sức rồi nút. Nhóm xua kê đáy bên tay của anh ta, nhóm xua nắng bẹt kê, nhóm mươi tay mơ ngày khai, nhóm xua kê chẳng ở bên tay đôi chìa. Nhưng đang tha mà tại cái tư tư mới dùm vua nhóm đó chỉ tục chật lơ cái lại vụ thân nằm Đừng đá, đừng thân nằm, anh lại đừng mạch phổ Nhưng đôi thai dương mình có thân nằm mà Nhưng còn đã phê cái thai ở lơ dương tự tin thân nằm đạt sai Chứ ai thân nằm đạt sai mà dương chết là lên tam buôn phê cái ai mà tự dương tự xong Ai kịp xong ai thôi Nhưng lưu tam cái hình giấy ta nhỏ toàn màn tính phát thân nằm đang ấy Ta em phê chở nhưng mà tính thật là anh còn đi hết lưu đã xa lưu xa lưu kênh về đây có bàn tay nắng mau bị dương tập xoam cả lại ở sốt sốt than đây miền đi lại cho bác lo ấy chẳng bằng drug resistant strains of malaria were first identified along the Thai Cambodian border. Of major international concern is the threat of the spread of these strains to areas with high rates of malaria, such as the African continent, which would have devastating consequences. Researchers have linked the contribution of poor quality medicines to the development of drug-resistant strains of malaria. In areas with limited financial and human resources, it is difficult to monitor and regulate the cross-border flows of people and commodities. Fake and poor quality medicines infiltrate the border markets, especially in areas with weak regulation and a lack of public awareness about the dangers of these types of products. On peut considérer, si vous voulez, euh, que sur les 750 000 personnes qui décèdent chaque année, hein, selon les sources officielles euh, du paludisme, euh, il y a environ euh, 150 à 200 000 morts qui pourraient être évitées si les antipaludiques en circulation contenaient euh, le principe actif euh, par an. Oui. Clearly, this is, this is a, a reasonable number, I mean, given the scope of the problem, but I would add that it, it might even be an underestimate for the following reason. Um, you have situations where there's treatment failure as a result of taking uh, medicines that uh, purport to be medicines, but they are not. And as a result, patients succumb to the disease. I wonder how many of these situations are being uh, included in the calculation of the, uh, of the fatality. 
Mesot is a town nestled on the Moy River of the western Thailand border with Burma, home to thousands of migrant workers who cross into Thailand seeking stable employment and essential medical services. In the informal street markets, a colorful array of dubious medicines from Burma is widely available. These unregistered medicines and herbal products from across the river provide migrant workers with familiar remedies against many diseases, including malaria, one of the major concerns among this population. Organizations such as the Shoklo Malaria Research Unit provide much needed outreach and health care to vulnerable people on both sides of the river. A recent case of a malaria patient who had taken fake artesanate to treat his illness inside Burma was reported by the clinic. Thinking he was being cured, the patient had unwittingly consumed an ineffective medication with tragic consequences. Of course, it was dramatic because the patient died. We managed to uh, get hold of the tablets of artesanate that he had used and uh, analyzed it, and it was totally counterfeit. There was nothing in it. And to trace back the, the, the shop in the village where he had uh, bought this uh, tablets, these tablets, and uh, there was an interesting reaction from the village community and the village head uh, uh, called for a meeting and explained to the people that it was dangerous to buy drugs in the, like this and they collect all the medicine they could find in the village and burned, burned everything. I find it unbelievable that people do that, you know, so it's kind of to manufacture a drug that they know can potentially kill someone because someone takes it in the belief someone with malaria will take it in the belief that's going to cure them. They might have come, you know, they might have travelled for a day to get to somewhere where they can get a drug, they buy the drug, they think it's going to kill them, they go back home. They don't have time to you know, go back again and get a good quality drug. The initial data that we collected um, suggested that it was widely spread the, over the whole of mainland Southeast Asia from uh, western uh, Burma through to southern Vietnam and to southern China over uh, especially poor communities that had uh, no other access to anti-malarials. So in 2005, with very little happening to try to stop this problem, we collaborated with WHO, with Interpol, and with a range of forensic laboratories to try and obtain evidence as to where these may have been coming from. We had our suspicions, but we had no firm evidence. So by doing that, we looked at the type of chalk in the tablets, I assumed before that chalk was chalk, but no, there are many different types of chalk. And the chalk that was found was a type that is only uh, mined on a large scale in southern China. Um, and we also looked for traces of plant material, of pollen within the tablets. And that again suggested that the tablets had uh, an origin either of the raw material or were being manufactured in southern China or in an area um, near there. Obviously, with wind blowing pollen, it's not a very accurate tool, but it suggested that it was from that um, general region. The traditional path of spread of, of drug resistance in the past to chloroquine and to sulfadoxine pyrimethamine in plasmodium falciparum was to move westward, to cross over Thailand, uh, through Myanmar, into India, and then into the African continent. And so the nightmare scenario of a global pandemic of artemisinin resistance with accompanying increase in morbidity and mortality is obviously what we must stop at all costs. If you have a substandard drug, so an uh, artesanate, and it's um, in a low dose and not in the full, full dose, then from the resistance point of view, that's, that's fantastic for the parasite. Um, whereas a good quality, you know, genuine product, hopefully it should knock out the parasite. Uh, ແລະអាចជាបាលបានអមាត្រាម៉ាឡារៀជាងឿក៏ចាញ់ជាបាលអស់តែ <coughs> ការស្លាប់របស់ប្រជាពលរដ្ឋរាប់រយនេះនេះវាជាជាជាភាពភីនសំណាងរបស់គ្នាឬក៏ជាកំហុសជាជាជាជាមីស្ទេកជាកំហ
system yung yung pagjara lang nang It was in this hall here where our collaboration between WHO and Interpol started. In 2005, the WHO Regional Office for the Western Pacific, jointly with the Southeast Asian Regional Office, organized in here a meeting on counterfeit medicines. We had in our hands samples of these fake artesanate. And through this collaboration, um, a very sophisticated forensic investigation was launched with the aim to uh, find the production site uh, as well as distribution rings uh, and of course with the aim to, to disrupt uh, both production and distribution. Alors, au cours de, des enquêtes que nous avons pu coordonner avec Interpol euh, dans la lutte contre cette contrefaçon, euh, l'un des défis auxquels nous sommes confrontés, c'est de retracer l'origine des produits contrefaits. Et en Asie du Sud-Est, nous avons vu des, euh, des contrefaçons de médicaments qui étaient extrêmement bien faites, donc avec un packaging complètement sophistiqué, qui était même très difficile à détecter pour les, euh, les, dé les détenteurs de droits mais euh, qui également euh, venait de plusieurs sources différentes. Sur l'enquête que nous avions faite en 2005, euh, un des sites de production était situé en Chine. Donc lorsque nous avions commencé à travailler avec les services de police chinois, ils avaient réussi à pouvoir déterminer l'endroit et les zones géographiques où étaient situées ces productions d'antimalaria de, de, contrefaits. Par la suite, nous avons constaté que la Chine n'était pas le seul endroit où ces antimalaria pouvaient être faits, produits et également distribués dans les pays. Donc nous essayons vraiment de travailler main dans la main avec chacun des pays en Asie du Sud-Est et en Asie en général, comprendre leurs spécificités, comprendre leurs défis de façon à pouvoir nous assister les pays qui ont besoin de savoir d'où viennent les produits. The lifeblood of Southeast Asia, the Mekong River, traverses and connects six countries, acting as a highway for the transit of products and people throughout the region. Despite efforts to police and control them, the borders along the river are difficult to monitor. Cross-border trafficking in black market products such as illicit drugs, jade, amphetamines, and fake medicines is facilitated by the porous nature of these borders. Counterfeit medicines smuggled from China, India, and Pakistan are repackaged in transit countries destined for both local and third country markets. Once the fake product leaves the point of manufacture, it can be repackaged multiple times for multiple local markets around the world, including internet distribution. Botan is a notorious transit point for illicit products crossing from China into Laos and on into the southern Mekong countries. Caravans of 18-wheelers carry tons of products through the border and customs checkpoints every day. Massive quantities of goods transiting this border point are nearly impossible to monitor and only a fragment of bulk shipments are thoroughly checked by customs and border police. Customs agents use a single large-scale x-ray machine to examine the shipment containers in an attempt to identify inconsistencies in the contents. However, the sheer volume and number of trucks poses an enormous challenge to local officials. Mm. ยาปอมก็คือยาอันบริมาตรฐานภายหลังที่ว่าเฮาพบเห็นแล้วเฮาก็ได้ยึดเนาะโดยสมทบภาคส่วนที่เกี่ยวข้องเป็นต้นเป
แต่หูแล้วว่าผู้ใดเป็นผู้เฮ็ดเป็นคนคนเฮ็ดเพื่อหาผลกําไรหาผลประโยชน์และคนประเภทนี้ผลิตยาปลอมและยาตกมาตรฐานนี่เป็นคนที่บ่มีจัญญาบันวิสาสีจัญญาธรรมกันแท้Alors il est vrai que euh, la plus belle invention, je dirais, du XXe siècle, c'est la conteneurisation, l'utilisation du conteneur. Actuellement, envoyer de la marchandise de Chine en France, c'est quasiment moins cher que faire un Paris-Bordeaux. Ça paraît incroyable, mais c'est comme ça. Les bateaux, les, les bateaux contiennent de 11 000 à 12 000 conteneurs. Un conteneur, ça fait 20 pieds, c'est à peu près 33 mètres cubes. C'est énorme au niveau de la marchandise, et donc c'est une grosse facilité. Grosse facilité d'utiliser les transports. Pourquoi Anonymisation des transports. Vous pouvez envoyer des choses et vous n'apparaissez pas forcément. Grosse difficulté de contrôle par les douanes. Par ailleurs, les douanes vont contrôler l'import que entre 2 à 5 des marchandises physiques à l'importation. Donc tout le reste va se faire par des contrôles documentaires, des contrôles différents, mais pas physiques. On ne peut pas arrêter un conteneur. Il faudrait un million de douaniers pour contrôler tous les conteneurs qui vont circuler simplement dans un pays. C'est pas possible. Many counterfeit medicines and other illegal products are often shipped via the regular postal service. They are sent from the point of manufacture through repackaging sites and then on to retail markets at final destinations around the world. Everything from lifestyle drugs to dietary supplements and steroids are distributed globally and are likely ordered through online internet retailers. Counterfeiters create fake packaging with fake labels, trying to deceive customs agents regarding the true source of the product. Ça aussi. Donc là, ce sera pas écrit dessus en thaïlandais, parce que ça veut faire croire que c'est du vrai, qui n'est pas fabriqué d'abord. C'est pareil, c'est un médicament. C'est pas de la contrefaçon, c'est un médicament qui n'a pas le droit d'être vendu en France en banque libre. De façon très massive d'Asie. Voilà. Ça, il n'y a pas de problème. Et comme je vous disais, le textile, ce serait plutôt le Vietnam, la Thaïlande, le Cambodge. Euh, tout ce qui est électronique, euh, euh, ce serait plutôt la Chine. Hong Kong et Singapour, qui n'est qu'un centre de, euh, de transport, enfin de, de regroupage, de regroupement. It involves transnational criminal organization. Basically, because when it comes, it across uh, transnational boundaries, almost at the same time. We used to receive report uh, medicine that are counterfeited in country in North Asia. Immediately after that, we received the same reports from South East Asian countries, such within within uh, within less than ten days, meaning that they are widely distributed. Uh, rapidly distributed across national boundaries. We have found horrific um, ingredients in some counterfeit medicines that we found. We found um, rat droppings, we found dirt, we found lead paint, we found methamphetamines, all used as ingredients for in counterfeit medicines. So you have the innocent um, patient and their doctor consuming, prescribing and consuming medicines, and if they're not getting it from a trusted source, you don't know what you're going to get. I found a lot of people, those who are mafias, previously selling heroin, smack, some narcotics, they came into the field, saying that in the narcotics field, there is high risk 
lesser money than the counterfeit drugs. I think that these are people who are basically looking to make money. Um, and um, I believe that these also are people that might trade between medicines to drugs, illegal drugs, uh, to uh, money laundry, to uh, sales of arms. I mean, to some of these people, a medicine is just a commodity. On dit un chiffre, alors c'est des chiffres, il faut faire toujours très attention, hein. mais les chiffres actuellement, c'est quoi On dit que pour 1000 dollars, si vous faites du faux médicament, votre retour sur investissement peut être entre 200 000 à 450 000 dollars. Je veux dire, quand vous voyez ce genre de chiffres, euh, c'est clair qu'il y a un attrait pour n'importe qui, et en particulier pour les organisations criminelles. Au niveau des chiffres, en revanche, plus il y a de saisies qui sont faites, plus on trouve de la contrefaçon de médicaments. En Europe, par exemple, en 2009, une opération est faite par les douanes européennes. Pendant deux mois, 34 millions, 34 millions de comprimés ont été saisis. ผมว่าในเรื่องการทลายเพราะว่าเป็นสิ่งที่เกี่ยวข้องกับชีวิตเราเราประทานยาเข้าไปเนี่ยเราไม่รู้ว่าเราต้องไปเสี่ยงอะ
This global program is funded by USAID to help strengthen pharmaceutical quality assurance systems in the developing world. The PQM program supports many activities to ensure that good quality essential medicines are available in the public and private sectors and is active in Thailand, Vietnam, Lao PDR, Cambodia and Myanmar. Routine surveillance of poor quality medicines has generated encouraging results as early detection of fakes is crucial to protect the public's health. Great progress has been made in Cambodia through active closure of illegal outlets and increased surveillance of retail pharmacies. Based on established protocols and timelines, project teams from the Mekong countries routinely go into the field and collect medicine samples from over 50 sites in Southeast Asia, recording data about sample type and location. Teams collect medicines from private retail pharmacies, hospitals, clinics, and public health facilities targeting infectious disease medicines. The teams are not only looking for counterfeits, but are also looking for legitimate products which may have unintended quality defects. การเก็บตัวอย่างยาเห็นมั้ยเป้าหมายก็แน่ใส่ติดตามคุณภาพยาอยู่ตามท่องตลาดหรือว่าการสกัดกันยาปอมเนาะหรือว่าหลังจากเ
ก็ทีมแรกทีมแรกจะอยู่กับผมทีมที่สองก็อยู่กับผู้กองทีมดีนะครับ We're gonna go to a location. Yeah. We're gonna give you money. Yeah. You're gonna go in and purchase Viagra. Okay. And you're gonna come back to the van, blue van, you oh. see parked nearby. Okay. You'll come inside. There'll be a, myself and a couple of policemen in there. You'll give me the pills. We'll test it right on the spot to see if it's real or fake. Yeah, okay. The Viagra is uh, counterfeit. Uh, it's quite easy to tell for a lot of reasons. One, this stripe is normally a light blue color. Viagra should be in, written in a light blue color. In Thailand, this symbol does not appear on the box. The uh, Viagra tablet purchased in a uh, true scan uh, machine, which uh, provides an almost instant analysis uh, through uh, doing a laser read of the uh, contents of the tablets and it gives an almost instant analysis as to whether or not the tablet is uh, authentic or counterfeit. Fail. It's counterfeit. ไม่เป็นไรไม่เป็นไรมาเลยทุกคนครับขอขอบัตรเลยครับพี่ยิงจากไหนก็มีกล่องเดียวค่ะยิงจากไหนกล่องเดียวยิงจากกล่องเดีย
ในประเทศกัมพูชีจีพีเซคือสกอตคุณตัวเลืออนุมอนตัวเลยมีกองในเมียนเบย์ประเทศบันไดประเทศกัมพูชียังตัวตัวบ้านบนเกศในมูลที่นี่บ่าให้ขนมโกได้มูลที่นี่คือจะทำโจรวมตัวเอาเครียดขนมกาตุบสกัดนั่งมาคราบเลือดพอคลายคลายบ่าให้กล่าวปีนั่งม้าดาดำเบย์เอามันเตยเดาอนุวัชบับเปียปอนตันนั่งกาบังคราบบดมือพอคลายคลายนี่เตรียมตีเอามันเตยนั่นคือทางกดเตยแต่โยดังใบทางเมียนสมัติพิบขนมกางยีสราวชีสึงเกตเนบอดลำเบอร์นั้นเฮ้ยก็เตยตีปีนั่นคือทางคือจองเอาเมียนกาสักกาคนนี้หายได้บานเมียนแบบดอกดาวกันแล้วบ่าChiều tám khi ông bạt, xong ตุ๊กสกัดนั่งประชานการเปิดพอสักหลายครั้งนั่งสับปุ่นใจได้ซ้อมนั่งจมูกคนใจได้กลอมเอาเมียนการติดตามบอลพรมแรงกำจีไท
In hidden and dank warehouses, black market pills are pressed for worldwide delivery. Are we willing to risk our health, our lives, and the lives of our family when seeking treatments from unknown sources? Are the efforts by authorities to curb the rising tide of internet distribution enough to ensure our safety? We as consumers and patients must be empowered through awareness and education to make informed choices. The problem is getting worse. Yet we must continue to fight against the illicit trade in counterfeit medicines, to battle against those who leave a wake of despair in the shadow of their deceit. <laughs>